Okay. So, one of the things we're going to talk about today, uh, I've got this coyote head that somebody graciously brought in and gave to Katie so I can mutilate it. Uh, and one thing that I don't think anybody, um, I don't know how many of you ever shaved an animal down just to see what the skin does. It's kind of what Orthberg did to that pheasant. But one thing with predators is always ear placement and ear set. You know, it, if you get an ear liner that's actually a cartilage, well, I was always taught, well, you take your mannequin and you gouge out the top of the mannequin and then you set that ear liner down in there. That means ever seen that or been instructed that. Well, the problem is, is then you get a pinch of this skin right here. And what I'm talking about, some of you will have to come up and see this, but you can see where I've, I've shaved the ear, or the hair off his ear, and you can tell where that cartilage ends right here. Everybody see that? Okay, well that's where your ear liner would be, correct? Yeah. Notice this flap of skin that's right here? If you take your ear cartilage and you cut your mannequin, a big wedge out of your mannequin, and you shove that cartilage down into that head and you've got all your clay built there, what are you supposed to do with this skin? That's where that hair pattern gets pinched. So if you remove some of this and you kind of know what is there, and you can tell when you're moving this around, that little piece of skin is always attached right there. And if you had your cartilage smashed down in there, then you've got, when you're mounting it, you've got all that skin you can't go anywhere with. And then, like I said, then all these hairs, they always look funny. And you can't tax him because it's, the ear liner's not in the right spot. So you have to kind of know that ear liner sits on top of the head, but it's not directly on the head when you're mounting it with your, with your form. Everybody see that? So when we're doing reference, that's, that's what we're trying to learn is what actually is that skin doing? How can we take this hard ear liner and put it on a hard form with the skin and make it coincide? How I do that is with this product right here that Bill Newman from North Dakota turned me on to. It's by Smooth On Company out of Pennsylvania. This is their EcoFlex 5. But the good thing about this system, you don't have to worry about mixing it by volume or by weight because it's all going to do it in that tube. I'm going to kind of set this coyote up. He's uh, been out of the freezer a while, so he's a little dehydrated. Um, you know, this is something that you can have in your truck all ready to go when you're out hunting and you shoot something that you're not going to mount or anything, but you want to reference. You can have all this stuff ready, take it to the truck, and make it right there, and you wouldn't have to pump up the lips or the nose or anything that I'm going to do here today. I'm just going to use a little water to kind of pump this nose up a little bit so it doesn't look so dead. And that's the thing to, to remember you know, when you're making a, a facial cast, you know, you're actually casting and it's dead muscle, dead tissue, so don't don't make everything that you're mounting look like that or it's going to be dead. So just realize that it is dead tissue that you're you're studying. But it'll give you kind of an idea of what things should look like. The great thing about this stuff, it, it sets up so fast. You don't have to wait 12 hours. So I'm just going to use a little Vaseline for making some nasal plugs out of this napkin here. So I'm going to pack this down into the nasal cavity so the silicone just doesn't keep running all the way down. So you want to be careful not to distort your nose too badly by filling it up with paper towel, especially on something small like this. A deer would be a lot easier. Then I just brought a pair of just coyote eyes, and I'm actually going to just take this glass eye, and I'm going to put it right on top of the real eye. And that's going to kind of help take up that space where that real eye has deflated. I'm trying to get the nictating membrane in somewhat of an accurate spot to kind of help show that too. I'll generally use super glue on this lip line and you can just super glue your lips together so when you put the silicone on the weight of the silicone doesn't push your lips out. I 
And then what I just like to use these yogurt containers. Anything simple for a dam, really. For the RTV? No, it's expensive. Expensive. $24 for just this right here. Wow. But it kicks off so fast, so. We'll just shut down on it. As hot as it is in this room, probably about 10 minutes. Oh, wow. And that's why I, I, I like it for making reference casts. Yeah, that would be very good. Been better than like dragon skin? No, it's not as tough as dragon skin. You're not going to get many pores out of it, but for when you're just making a reference, right? You know, a couple, a couple pores is all you really need. Okay, I kind of just went over the eyes. And I want that to kick over the eyes so the weight of the silicone don't push my. Uh, uh, island open. But gravity's working against me here. So the new silicone will bond to the cured silicone without a problem? Yeah, as long as I don't, you know, wait too long here. But it's just all running over the eyes and filling them back of the head, so we're, we're moving fast. Then I'm going to come up here in the nose and fill up my nose. So does everybody understand what I mean when I say mother mold? Is that term familiar? Who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Okay, you want to come up here? You want to raise your hands and do that, huh? So we have, we have the silicone applied for a negative. Now if I was to pull that off, it would just flop and I would lose all my shape. Okay, so I'm going to use the Bondo to cover that and then the bond will fit into that. So I can pull the bondo off of the silicone, pull the silicone off the kayak, and then put the silicone back into the bondo and it'll hold the shape. And then we'll pour it. getting it sewn up or doesn't fit right, well it's because it just needs a little bit of rasping and everything. It's like Jody was showing you on the deer, you got to take a little bit off. Same thing in these little mammals. So just having this around will just kind of be a, a fresher for you, be like how does that really go? Uh, other thing too, you know, tail junctions, you know a lot of people will have the tail junction clear out here and it's too far and a lot of it sits back up in there. So little things like that be right there on your wall and you can just look at it and instantly know what you got to do to the form, where you got to adjust. Because each form is different. Sometimes you'll get a, a small mammal form, the tail junction will be way up here, the next one will be way back here, and then you're sitting there going, where does it go on my skin? Thanks. You also kind of, a lot of times you'll see, if, if you get to mounting forms or all terrain forms, and you move this leg, then all of a sudden everybody wants to make this knee a, a, a point. Try to think how to do that point, you know, it makes it a sharp. It's kind of flat in there, really. Cats are real nice. Um, I guess you can kind of see it. This red fox, you know, how far do you, how far do you cut your tucking groove, you know, in your mannequin? How much is there? So that'll kind of give you those little points of reference that you can't really get from a picture. You can't really get from measurement, but kind of gets you to do that. So. 
Any questions on making any of these? How many are going to go home and do this? Oh, question. So if you wanted to make a form, like I got a couple of domestic sheep and lambs to mount. Mm -hmm. I got to make cast the form. Yep, yep. What, what would you do to get, the, I guess, the 3D body? So when you're, instead of making just a half a body, so you're going to lay your carcass in that sand, you're going to cover everything up halfway, and you're going to start with your bottom legs first, you know, say he's laying this way. You're going to bury them halfway, and then you're going to pour half of that with your plaster. And then you can bring more sand on top of that, lay these two legs down, bury all of this halfway, okay, then pour the plaster. Then you're going to turn all of that over, and where, where your carcass is laying your plaster, set, put some uh, mold release on there so your plaster will not uh, connect, and then you're going to pour one big slab of plaster. And then you're going to want to carefully separate all of those three, you know, four pieces, you'll separate those, and then you'll want to do the waxing you know, after they dry, wax them and everything. Put all four pieces together and hold it with ratchet straps and whatnot drill a hole somewhere in your plaster, generally your, your big one piece where you can pour your foam. Pour your foam into those, let your foam kick and cure, and then you're going to break it. You're going to have one shot. Then you'll have your form, but it will be dead muscles and everything on that form. Then you'll go in and you'll fix them with, you know, you can clay them, then remold your uh, form if you want, or uh, when I did it with that little lamb, I just used Bondo and fixed all my sagging muscles and everything. And then get your original carcass cast form. And that's why I say this, doing this a couple different times, and you could even do it, you know, if you've got a couple lambs, you could kind of get the feel for it, because it's a lot to dive into if, if you've never done it. But this is a great way to start, kind of understand what you're up against, what you're going to need, kind of get the technique down. Plus, then you get a little bit of reference out of it. Do you like doing a hole instead of quartering them, taking the legs off and casting them? Yeah, um, I've done it both ways, and you can take the legs off. The rear legs are easier to line up, but then sometimes it's like, where does that shoulder really go? So if I'm going to go carcass cast for competition, I'm going to leave it whole. So I know that I don't have something way stretched out. So, like I said, the hinds are a little bit easier. You always know where that ball socket is in the hip, but the shoulder's got a ton of movement. You know, and then when you're going to put it back in, you're like, oh, where does that actually go? I have some molds at home of, of deer noses and things that I've made for my actual own replacement nose that I've used. Uh, and I use this polycast for it. And I'll add a little red flocking to it when I mix it and stir it up. So when it kicks off, it's got a nice pink hue to it already for my base color. You choose clay? So, yep. Yeah. So the little lip that's on here, on your, to hold your lids on your yogurts or whatever. Yeah. So I put that over the paw, and I took some screws and screwed the container down to the board so the pressure wouldn't lift it off. And then I took water-based clay and right. sealed it with that. Right. And then I came in and just pump, pumped it full. And then let it set up like we did here, here, and then just pull it. And it's, it's plenty full of silicone there, so I don't need the mother mold again, so that will hold it. But you know that was about a half a tube of silicone. Did you have to cut your silicone pull it? Hmm? Did you have to cut your silicone? No, you could wiggle it around and, and pull that out. On it. <coughs> now, are you putting anything on the hair itself, or yeah. it doesn't stick at all? Pulled it right out, but I shaved, shaved it. Yep. And you could, I mean, you could put Vaseline. Say, you know, this was your coyote, it's your trophy coyote, and you want to make its own nose. Yes, you could smear it down with Vaseline, mm -hmm. but it will make this a little chewy. Is the only drawback to it. Sure. So yes, you could do that. 